What's up guys? So we're back with video number two. Um, so we're going to talk about different uh, types of flint strike material that you can use to kind of put in your bag and to hoard, hoard for future um, flint striker pads, you know, like cotton balls and stuff like that. And the different materials you can use and find around the house um, in order to make this. So today I'm going to do a few things and show you different materials that you can find around the house um, to make flint striker pads, including cigarette butts. Yes, I said it. Cigarette butts are a great material to use flint strike pads. Um, T-shirt squares, sterile gauze pads, um, cotton filled gauze pad compression pads. Only use them if you have a humongous abundance of them. Don't take them out of your everyday medical kit. Um, usually if they're outdated uh, is a great way to do it because this would be like a last resort thing. Um, but today I'm going to show you how to tear these apart and how to use the Vaseline to fill with these. Um, also I have cotton squares. Um, you can also use cotton balls. I don't have any cotton balls, but with these, I'm actually going to show you how to make a candle per se fl uh, fire starter. So basically this will be, um, if you're trying to, uh, you know, get something going and you need to, to make a candle as well as start a fire, um, this wick is amazing. You can make it at home. It's paraffin wax filled string that I don't want to make on video because it takes a long time but other YouTube channels out there have it it's very easy to do you just melt some candle wax clear paraffin not colored color does not stick well with string um, and you have to use a little bit of starch as well to get it to stick into the string you take 100 feet of string and you dip it right into the wax you let it sit for five minutes um, and then you pull it out and then you string it up somewhere that it can dry. Once it's dried and cured, it should be sticky and tacky enough to where it doesn't flake. If it flakes when you bend it and move it, then you didn't use enough starch. There's other materials you can add into it too. Um, waterproofing material. What I usually do is once it's strung up, I take um, Timberland Boot uh, waterproof spray and I'll spray it. It's still flammable. It doesn't protect it from being unflammable. The waterproofer is extremely flammable. I trust you. Trust me on that, actually. So, all right, we're going to get into this. We got my bag. This is kind of a mess, so grab some gloves. Oh yeah, TP is another great material to use for flint strike cotton material type stuff. Um, and if you don't believe me and just, oh, the cotton, cotton ball stuff is the only one like this that, you know, you can use for flint striker. No, not at all. As long as you got the petroleum jelly um, to retain into it. It'll work good. I've even taken shavings, like wood shavings, ground it all up as fine as I could, and then compact it with this and make it's like a knot ball. One strike, woof, right up. All right, so usually when you do this, the best thing to do is to have some type of like piece of paper or plastic sheeting to protect yourself and your table from this and making a big mess because it is a big mess so we're going to start with the gauze pads uh you can get them in different sizes the two by two is usually the best size sorry i got something in my eye that's bothering me the two by two is the best one uh, make sure it's sterile and not doesn't have the um antiseptic in it as well um, and what you can do with this afterwards is you can actually save this 
for kindling. And what I like to do in the woods to get a fire going with this material is I'll open it. I'll pinch it into a square kind of like, or a triangle like this. And then what I do to make legs is I'll tear open one edge. And this is on the bottom, not on the top, by the way. So go like this. You kind of just make some legs that will help make it to stand up. So I'll take it like that. Whoops, gotta bend these a little more. Kind of got to work with it. So you have it so it's standing up and then you know it's all open and then once you have your your gauze pad sorry my i gotta turn my autofocus off this is annoying once you have your pad filled with you know petroleum jelly like for instance you just take it and you put it in to the top flint strike right through it it will spark on the cotton pad and then ignite the paper and then that way you can put your sticks all around it and it works really well uh, windy situations, not so much. It's usually more difficult. In a windy situation, I'll take four sticks and I will peek them on the ends. So I'll peek four here, kind of like this, triangular, and then four here. And then I'll build my stick wall to keep this in the center. And that way the sticks on the sides will actually ignite as well. And then you have a base to start building your wood fire as well. All right, so that's that. So don't ever throw this away. You know, I always keep these in my, my pack as well, just because it's more kindling to, to help you. So we're going to put that aside. So here's the pad. It's a two by two, four inch, dual layer. The center layer is paper, the outer layer, bleh, layer is the cotton material. And the paper is really nice as well because this will, will you know, assist you. And what a lot of people like to do with, the, with this as well, of course it won't stand up again, but let's see. Yeah, it won't stand up. They'll take this paper pad and drape it over the top once it's lit and this will go up really quick but i tend to like to use it in the cotton uh pad roll situation um today we're not going to today i am just going to show you the plain and simple plain jane cotton two by two square cut it in half doesn't matter which way wow my scissors suck Boom, one two by two gives you two squares. Take your petroleum. This is very simple to do. Put it in the, the center of the pad, fold it. What I like to do is I'll tip it upside down where the opening, where the opening is down like this and then the the petroleum's up top layer and i like to smush from top till it fills in and then push with my fingers down try to keep it inside the cotton don't let it you know splurge out the sides if you do keep it on your fingers and then just take it and wipe it down because that way you save petroleum doing that you take your time with it, and you can tell as you're doing this, my light doesn't show you um, how it's done right. Yeah, I have no way to block it. You, There's perforated holes in here, and you know you're saturated with it when, they're, when you can't see through it anymore. So 
So I'm about halfway halfway through and it's saturated all the way and I'm running out of material so what I'm going to do is pinch and slide down and I'm all out completely out so I'll grab a tiny bit more maybe just a little thim thimble drop you can't really tell and I'll go in and open it up and put it in the middle. I'll open it up halfway, put it in the middle, close it back up, and do it again until it's all saturated through. Cotton balls take a lot more um, petroleum. I don't know why. I guess it's why it retains it and you know type of material but I've experienced with everything there can be just to see what is a good flint striker yeah, I ran out of petroleum again and I honestly think the 2x2 two two square is one of the best longest lasting ones out there because it'll retain the um, the waterproofing when I'm done spraying it the cotton ball takes a lot more waterproofer for some reason as well. Oh, my TV just shut off for some reason. That's cool. All right. So that's good there. That's good and saturated. Now, when you put this down, put it down on something that is not going to get sticky. So I'm going to take this because this one I'm throwing out. I have plenty of these already. And then what I'm taking is wiping this off because you're going to need to be able to roll this. And when you have petroleum on your fingers, you're not going to have a good time rolling it. So I just take a little TP. And as you're wiping this with the petroleum, you can use this to make other flint starter material as well. So it's two birds with one stone. That's if you want to use this. This works good um, if it's really windy out because it's a bigger material. But you will be needing a lot of petroleum jelly for this because it's a big ball of paper. But it works. Works good. So dry your fingers off. Even though I'm about to get them covered in jelly again. All right. So now, let's get this out of the way, open the petroleum jelly two by two that's cut in half, open it up if you can, bam, all right, so you lay it out straight in front of you, I'm going to try to move my phone so you can see me do this. Excuse me. All right. All right. So what you do now is let's move this. This lighting situation is horrible. Oh, here goes the catastrophe. All right, fuck it. So what you do now is you take the end closest to you. Oh, I forgot. So you can use this or you don't have to. Um, I'm going to use this now because I might as well. I'm at this stage. This just adds to help with it, with burning. This is that dry pat. <clears throat> This is the dry page that came off it. All right, I think it focused. You can lay it on top. This is not a science either. It's very simple to do this. And you just take it, fold it, fold it, and then fold it. 
some people what they do with this is they'll they'll butt open the top it's a lot more a little more work to do but I'll show you how to do that as well it's very simple they just take a nail or something pointy put it through the center and open swing it around and what that does is it helps get the spark through the center and it makes it last longer because if you spark it anywhere it's not going to last it's just going to go up all in one shot you want it to burn slow and build up the, the fire and the heat around when you do it from the top and you just take it roll it and then you have a plug so what people like to do is I don't have anything sharp and pointy so I'll take the scissors you go through the top through the center That's all it is, is, whoops, where's the camera? It just makes a little pocket. So when you sit this in the center of your pit, and then you throw your flint strike. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to light this in here, but it will light if you get your spark right on the top. Um, <laughs> I wanted to do it in here, but I'll do it outside. So, yeah, this... Is all it is and you can make a whole bunch you can make two with a two by two square or what a lot of my friends do is they'll take them and they'll cut them into little plugs and then they'll just stack a whole bunch into a ziploc bag and makes it that easy the next one that we're gonna do let me wipe these off the scissors because I just completely greased them up. This is the cotton square. It's a pocketed ridged cotton. So each one of these has a pocket ridge of cotton and then it's a compressed um, gap in between each one. <clears throat> what I've done is cut... <laughs> these individually or just make one big pad and then cut them this way after or sorry this way so this one is a big mess because this one takes a lot of uh, petroleum um, oh yeah and if you're careful you can literally just peel two squares off at a time and then have a third or what have you so to start we'll just do these because it takes a little less you're going to need a lot. You goop it on. And just work it in. Make a big old mess. It's going to be a big old cottony, goopy, nasty mess. What I like to do is I'll... I'll goop it into like a circular motion because that's what your goal is in the end is gooping it into a round plug Nobody ever thought using petroleum jelly was a good fire starter. I mean, it's kind of a redundancy of, you know, if you're in the bushcraft or if shit hits the fan and somehow come across some petroleum jelly and in a medicine cabinet and using it as a fire starter and making turds out of them, white turds. There you have it. There's your cotton petroleum plug. These usually light and go up really quick. Um, so what I like to do is I'll spray them with the, the waterproofer.
because it does two birds with one stone. It keeps them dry so water doesn't get through the center of them. Only the external water can be around. I've literally dunked these and let them sit underwater, picked it up, and put it on a fire, and they sparked right up. Um, and then the waterproofer will actually delay how long these burn. So these will burn seven to ten seconds if it's windy sometimes even faster because the wind will um, fuel the fire obviously um, so yeah there's that one and if you cut these don't use scissors use like a razor blade because when you use scissors the scissors will take the plug and shimmy it and shift it and make a mess um, what a lot of people do after this part to make big surface area on the plug for the cotton one is they'll take it and they'll just start shredding it apart it's hard when it's filled with jelly and what they do with this when it's flat like this is if it's ice or rain or snow or what have you you can put this you know two or three of these on a on a you know icy fire pit and you can make like a pad that will heat up and melt the ice down below so they'll put one on the bottom put some wood put one up middle put some wood and then one more and as you do the top one and it burns down it's constantly fueling it each patch all the way down to the bottom and that way your your fire won't go out as fast or if at all um, so as long as you have something that is fueled these are great because um, you know you can keep them in a ziploc bag that's small keep a whole bunch of these and they're flat so they'll go in between you know whatever that's nice and flat and they're light they're not heavy at all so that's that one Wave my fingers again so I'm not making a mess. When you're in the bush, it don't really matter. You can you don't need gloves to do this. You can do this anywhere without gloves. So these are really cool because they come in like a, a bagged sealed padded material. So what I like to do is um, cut a very small square. And try to fish it out because I like to use these as bags afterwards so I'll cut like a triangle top just enough to open it to about here halfway through and then I'll squeeze this out and then you have your empty bag that is partially waterproof I mean this is paper on the back side but I've had good luck with keeping stuff in here the inside's got the, the plastic seal so here's your plugs actually we're gonna need that for the candle here's your plugs and there's your bag if you needed to so this is messy because you know it's a huge 9 by 9 square um, it, Honestly, to me, it's a last resort type situation, and it's a lot of material. You could make a couple hundred plugs out of this one pad. And it is nice if you are making them in bulk to have stored for what have you. Um, but honestly, I think it's a waste in a sense. So what I like to do is I'll open up this gauze catch material. Because this is layered, I think, three times. Yeah, no, two times. And then there's cotton material inside. And it is dusty as hell when you open these up. So you have to be very slow moving when you're pulling this out. Because it is pure shredded cotton that's inside. If you have a bunch of these, if, you're, if shit hits the fan and you uh, come across a hospital... You have a couple hundred thousand of these 
This makes a great bed material. Take some plastic bag and you fill this up. Honestly, I think that would be one of the most comfortable beds I would ever sleep on, to be honest. <laughs> All right. So I'm not doing this whole entire pad. I think at most I'm going to do is this. This little square. And you saw how easy it is to peel off. Um, I'm actually going to put this right in that bag. Because it makes so much dust, in fact. That I will probably die. And I will save this for another day. Oh boy, I can see the dust just punching everything around me. Alright, that's packed away. Drink break. Alright, so you have your little square. You have your petroleum jelly. This makes a lot of mess. I'm dreading this right now. But... If it's for you guys to know what to do and to know the materials, it's worth it. So you put the plug, you know, put your petroleum on top of it and try to make a pocket. And this just makes it easier to soak in. So you kind of rum, rummage it up into a ball and then you push through. And that way, it'll work itself to inside of it. Try to keep it into a ball the whole time. Try not to split it apart. Because otherwise, it makes the mess even worse. And trust me, it's a mess. So I do the three-finger method. If I get one comment that says this whole video is got the sexual comment, I will probably laugh for days. But at the same time, you will get deleted. All right, so I feel like one side's got more cotton than the other. You want it to be saturated to the point where you don't see... It's so hard to tell in this video, but... You need to be able to see a color change of yellow um, and no white. So if you see like spots of white after you've mixed it in and not yellow, you need to add more. Just a tiny bit more. Like tiny, tiny bit more. Because you need it saturated enough. And it'll make a nice hard packed yellow ball. We're at almost a half an hour of this video. Sorry. And like I said, no cuts, no edits. So if you're willing to watch it, thank you. If you want to watch a video that has cuts and edits, there's millions and millions of other people out there that make videos. Don't care. But if you do like and subscribe, I'm very grateful. There it is. This is the cotton ball. Perfect. And I, I prefer these. Even though because one pad gives me a couple million of these. And you can make them different sizes if you really wanted to. <clears throat> um, and then what I'm going to show you next. Because this will fall apart very, very easily. So this next thing is preventative disassembly. So with that sheet that you got... You need to find the thinner mesh part 
that is on the inside. Uh, this one doesn't have it, so we'll go with the outer layer. This is the webbed material. The webbed material is going to hold it in stronger, but what you don't want is, see this part with the blue line right here? You don't want that. Because when you use this as a fire starter, you need it to be thin as possible. Um, a lot of people say they take this off and then just use the cotton ball. And then just they throw this in the fire as well. I've got I've had good luck with it. Using it with both. So you just take it. Oh yeah, you see the color difference? Maybe. I guess you can't in this video. Yeah, right there. So there's the ball's yellow and then it's white. That's the color tone you would want um, for saturation wise. So I just take it, I know you can't see it. You want one layer over the lip. You don't have to be picky, but it does matter. Some people just say, eh, who cares? So I do that, I roll it through, and then you hold your finger on the little flap of where it um, ends. And then you pinch, and then you bring it around over the top. And you can always reshape this once you're, you know, when you take them out. But what I like to do to keep them protected is when you pinch through, you make a little pocket and you go like this. And it'll push the petroleum out into the, the patch. But this will actually help you um, storage wise too because balls are big and bulky. But I'll flatten it out and make a little plug patch like this. You can light fires with it just like this. Um, it is a little more tricky. You have to give it more flick. This thing sucks for starting fires. It's, I love it because it's small and compact and I don't need a freaking piece of metal and a bar, but you constantly have to do it because it uses such a small piece of flint. If you have a flint bar, one strike on a flint bar will do very well with this. Um, and then other people make candles with these too because they burn for a long time um and the more petroleum you you use the longer it will burn as well so that's that one and then uh, right. so with this one the two by two gauze plugs that i cut in half and half and half Afterwards, I'm going to make a candle, which is really cool. I love these. Oh, yeah. This part of that little pad is not my napkin. See? See how many uses you have? And th there's a napkin in here. You can blow your nose with it afterwards if you want. A mess, I tell you. Absolute mess. Who would have thought making easy fire starter material? I'm not gonna make it out of make one out of the um, cigarette because they they stink really badly. Even though I am a cigarette smoker, when you make these using the filters, it smells. But I will show you and tell you how to do it. Uh, where is my end so I don't unravel this whole smorgasbord? All right, so here's my end of the the paraffin wax wick. You can buy candle wick um, from like any candle store, Yankee Candle, if you really want, but it's fucking expensive. How cheap is a bar of wax from Walmart, and how cheap is a huge thousand foot spool of rope? It's cheaper than this at Yankee Candle, I'll tell you that much. 
So you take about eh, seven, eight inches. Take your wick and you pinch it in between the two plugs. And you, uh, you got to be careful when you do this because the ends will move. All right, so I cut this one short, but I'm trying to save some of that material so I don't have to make more. So once you're done wrapping, you hold half where you wrapped, you open it up, and then you put your your wick in, kind of like that, and then you pinch it closed. And then you can tip it up. All you need is just this little bit. Um, once you light this, it's not going to burn the wick around in a circle. This will give you a delayed time like a firecracker wick before it starts. And it will heat up this whole entire thing because there's temperature around it. So it, it helps start easily uh, once it ignites. Um, I do this in high wind situations. Um, also in wet material, um, we even tested with these on a lake on a, uh, floating wood raft that we used. And then we made a wood, like I said, a wood floating raft and a metal, metal plated top. And we had a fire out on the, the lake. And this is how we kept it because there was water everywhere. I mean, the water, the the fire pit that we had, it was sitting in water about an inch. And what we did to raise it was we just kept piling it up and, you know, we had a fire going and there was a fire up above the water. So it was really nice. Kind of difficult. Let's see if I can get this to light here. When the wick gets old, I can't with the gloves. Hold on. <sighs> yeah, so it'll light. Um, when the wick, so I just did this just to show you it burnt down into this when your paraffin gets old and dried out you're gonna have to kind of finick with it and you're gonna have to extend it somehow so once you unwrap it you still need to put it through the center of the plug because the goal see how it's in the center like that the goal is to get this to light and light down and down and then it'll light this eventually i mean it's like a delayed firecracker, I would say, honestly, but it works. Um, it's probably an efficient item to have in your bag, at least one of them, because if you're trying to get something to thaw out around you, that's a great way to do it. And it will stay lit before it lights your whole freaking fire up. And it's just a little, 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 little candle, little piece of flame that stays lit. Um, but like I said, if your wax rope gets old, like mine is, it will have a harder time um, igniting, and it will just melt down. And then once the rope is ex um, exposed, then it will light. But the newer, the better. I mean, this is probably five or six years old. It's hard as a rock now. Um, it works, but it's a pain in the ass. I use it just for demo purposes. I have to make newer stuff. So we're going to talk about the nasty cigarette butt. Um, it's harder to do with the, uh, with the gloves on, but I know how to do it. You pinch 
take your fingertips and then or yeah if you can pull it out that's fine or if you have a pair of scissors throw this away don't throw it on the ground because you're supposed to pick up your cigarette butts and throw them out oh these stink so you take this I already ripped it you can do this two ways you can shred it into just cotton material like I did with that one but you just slowly open it up and you make like a, a pad like that nice and thin you don't have to go crazy you don't have to go too too wide open but you can feel it till it gets nice and flat and you kind of push your limit with open it up a little bit and then you just take your petroleum jelly and mush it in I'm not you wasting my petroleum on this because that's gross um, so yeah, that's another easy one to do and it picks butts up off the ground and puts another purpose to it because when these are in the ground, it takes a long time for them to decompose. Granted, using fires in the environment is not good for the ozone layer, but still. <clears throat> All right, so recap. Um, let's see, we have our nine by nine. Or no, what size is this? Is this a 9x9? No. 5x9, 12 centimeter by 22 centimeter, 5 inch by 9 inch. And I'll have enough to last me a long time. Um, so you have, I'll go down in what I think is the best, from best to worst. Uh, so this one's a two by the two by two inch pad is a two bird with one stone killer. I rate it number three out of three, um, because there are better ones out there. I love the cotton material that you get from this. This is probably the best one. Um, this is more of like a a stripped material um, and then the cotton pad material that you can do as well is another good one I am NOT counting that because I don't use cotton pat cotton balls um, my main material that I use is this this 9 by 9 pad material that's what I always have on me Cotton pads, cotton balls, and, and gauze pads, I'd rather keep in my med pack. The 9x9 material is if you slice your jugular vein open and you need to absorb a lot of pad material. But I have my tourniquet, I have all my other medical stuff, so I can sacrifice one pad. And I'd rather keep these for smaller cuts. Um, it is great to have these. It is great to use them. But I'd rather use them for the purpose. I can sacrifice one pad... For this is this will last me a year, if not two years of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you know fires, um, and a lot of times I'll give a lot of this away when I open one up to a lot of my friends because they need it, they want it. Um, the other good one that's not on my top three list is the t-shirt pad. I didn't do one here today because it is a whore. sorry for my language, but it is a whore to get these to light. But they last a long, long, long time. Um, if you have it, you don't have any cotton on you, you have a t-shirt floating on you and a jar of petroleum jelly near you, by all means, it's perfect to use. Um, all right, so that's not on the list. Like, this is the cotton ball list. Not even on my report. So one, two, and three. I don't know where that pad went. I think it was in this bag. But so okay best um there are other ones out there that you can use for fire starter material <clears throat> pool chemicals <clears throat> quotation i did not tell you that in hand warmer 
material. It's icky stuff, dangerous, but it it will light anything. It will light in sub-degree weather. Um, so yeah, that's that. If you guys have any questions, um, I can answer them. Any point in time that you want. Um, I'm going to put this out right now because it will light up in my hands. But as you saw how short it lasts, when it gets older, your wick will just burn, 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 burn. The newer, the longer it'll last because your paraffin stays inside that rope. Um, the older it gets, it flakes and then it just will burn the cotton rope down. Um, so yeah. As long as you have good paraffin wick, it will just sit there and burn a little, little, little flame like this. And then eventually we'll reach down. I, I've had one of these last me on a wick that's about this long, 15 minutes before it caught. As you saw, it took three seconds to get to the plug. <laughs> so that's how old that stuff is. Um, and it matters, especially when you're out in the bush or in a bug out situation or survival whatever um, you can also do the same thing with these if you have a pick punch or what have you you can punch a hole right through it and then you just stick a candle wick right through the top and then you make a coil on the bottom with the candle wick um, and that way you can just keep pulling the the wick the the wick higher if you need to you can you know judge your own distance so there's that and yeah my next video which will be a short one probably be like a five minute video i'm gonna show you guys how to you to make duct tape rolls short simple sweet 10 foot eight foot and five foot rolls so like comment subscribe don't care if you hate me